Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> the text before us this morning is taken from Matthew's Gospel. We read from the 23rd chapter, beginning with the 34th verse. <clears throat> Therefore I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers. Some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so upon you will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on earth. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth, all this will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often have I longed to gather your children together, as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings? But you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This is God's word. <clears throat> Your friends in Christ, there's no greater evidence of hatred toward God and toward our Lord Jesus Christ than that which is shown to his followers, to his witnesses. Time and time again, God has sent his faithful messengers with the gospel and out into the world. In the Old Testament, his prophets who spoke for God, warning the people of the coming destruction, to repent of their sins and turn to God. And time after time, the prophets would be poorly received, some killed, some beaten, many and most rejected. And God warns his people, and, and the Lord here is warning his people and the people whom he is speaking to. The day is coming. That anger and that hatred and that wrath that is spewed forth upon those who serve the Lord. There's no shortage of examples around the world today where Christians are being persecuted in large numbers, much unknown to the common person because the media doesn't Tell those stories for some reason. Even here in our country, our liberties are soon being removed. A bill has been introduced to remove nonprofit status from congregations and churches that proclaim the gospel. A somewhat limited bill, not all religions there. And so we see it happening all around, and it's not something that we ought to be shocked by. And I certainly don't say that trying to evoke sympathy. It is the world that we live in. It is the nature of unbelief. That which it does not understand, it wishes to tear down and destroy, and sometimes with great shows of violence so as to scare people from that gospel ministry. And so when we think about those things in general, we think of the Lord. This is all against Him. And against those that follow Him, of course, but, but against Him. And so what does He do? On a cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. So he wishes their forgiveness. But here in our text, how many times, how many times have I come to you? How many times have I sent my prophets? How many times have I spoken? And I'll do it longer, and I'll do it more. But the time has come, the time of reckoning is near. You see in the Lord a compassion and a sympathy and an empathy for his people and for all people. Because this is, you know, he's speaking to those emboldened sinners that are treating the prophets so shamefully. And he's almost like he's, he's pleading in this lament here. Oh, how I wished I could have gathered you together like a, a hen does her chicks. We look at that and we say, well, Lord, couldn't you have used a, a lion, maybe? Or some grand steed or some, some you know, animal that was just ferocious and powerful? A, a chicken? Those little barnyard varmints? You know, we talk about, you know, um, the mother hen, that's always kind of a derogatory term toward a mother who is overly caring for her children. And he used this terminology here. Yes, he did, didn't he? Bids us to dig deeper into it a little bit, perhaps. 
You ever been out in a barnyard when a hen has her chicks? You ever see what happens? Try approaching those chicks one time. That hen will come after you and it'll come tearing at you and it'll try to scare you away. It may not succeed in doing it, but it's trying everything possible to scare you away. And then when there's a storm or something's happening, that wing will come out and the chicks will be underneath the wing. Because that's protection there. And you, you look at that and you say how much that mother hen loves and cares for those chicks. The chicks on them. Yeah, I mean, so we're supposed to go, right? You know, never really think about how much care and love there is in a parent. We, we do that as children. We never think about how much our parents love us and cherish us. Oh, they may say it, but isn't that what every parent says? You know, the type of thing. They don't appreciate that, how much they love their children. And so the Lord has given us a very tender picture here of, of loving concern. He said, I, I, I want to draw you into me so that I can protect you and I can watch over you and I can guard you and keep you from that evil one that would threaten to destroy your faith. I long to do that. And then when we understand the picture that way, it, it gives us whole new meaning. That just that, just that loving care of the Lord and also the idea of being safe there. You know, many of the examples of when children are young, um, they have a dream about a monster in their room, and they come running and jumping into your parents' bed. They're terrified. But because you're there, everything's good now again. Or the storm. You know, storming outside. Oh, they're scared of the, the, the noise and everything, and they come running in and so on. The Lord says, come to me for protection. And we have a lot of fears in our life. Oh, we're big... Tough people, we don't have any fears. Ah, half of us are afraid of the dark. Some of us are terrified of the spider walking across the room. You know, there's a snake in the garden. I'm not going in there. You know, that type of thing. I mean, there, we, we all have fears, but mostly we have fear of death. We have the fear of what's going to happen if I die? Am, am I going to be in heaven or am I going to be in hell? And the Lord says, come to me. You won't have to fear. You won't have to worry about those things because I have taken care of it. I will protect you. I am your Lord, your Savior. And to those people, those brutish, vulgar individuals that would do such harm to the Lord's people, those are the ones he's praying for too. How many times I wish to then those faithful words. You were not willing. Now, to the people who are not willing, probably doesn't mean a big thing. But it ought to. How many of us know that person that just will not go and see the doctor? You're sick, you need to go see a doctor. I'm not going to see any doctor. They don't do any good. You keep on telling them. You keep on telling them. Why won't you listen? Why won't you go? Stubborn, we say. Bullheaded. Well, yeah, granted, right. But why? The next person, you have a little pain in the pinky, and it's off to the doctor we go to find out what's wrong. There's something there's amiss here. <laughs> And they say, well, you need to see a doctor. Well, off they go and can't get there fast enough. Uh, and it's not being critical, but, but that's, you know, for some, it's just why. Why does one, I mean, you got to drag them kicking and screaming. The next person, you were not willing, the Lord said. I invited, I sent my prophets, I sent my pastors, I sent my teachers, I gave you my word. It's there abundantly. Why are you not willing? Well, first of all, there's the idea that I don't need it. I need someone that was hanging on a cross between two thieves. I need that in my life. That's what's going to make my life all, all the better. Yes, it will. Come and hear more about it. Come and hear why he was between the two thieves on the cross, dying. 
Now we hear more about the fact that he died on the cross, but a couple of days later, the tomb was empty. He rose. Why did he do that? Come and hear. Come and learn more. Come and understand more. I don't need that stuff. Some do. Some come with open hearts, willing, and receiving that message, and it's the greatest news that they ever could find. Some have a hard time getting rid of and letting go of their earthly treasures. Those are of more value than, than to serve the Lord. I like my hobbies. I like my activities. I like to be able to do things. I like to be able to relax and rest and everything. And, and uh, this worshiping the Lord and going to church on Sunday morning. It's one of the few days of the week I have off. I can sleep in. I can do this and this and this. And we go on ad nauseum with that stuff. The bottom line is, I don't view my Lord important. I'm not willing to go listen to him. I don't want to hear him. That's sad. But what can you do? When I picture Jesus, and using that example of the, of the, of the, of the hen, you know, how many of us as parents don't agonize at times over our children or our grandchildren or our brother or our sister or, or a member of the family? Why do they resist so much? Why are they so unwilling? I wish I knew the answer. You wish you knew the answer. You try to seek that answer. It all comes down to what's in the heart. When we give of ourselves to the Lord, when we give our heart to the Lord, He opens up a whole new understanding. That's why it says, when you come to faith, you are a new person. Yeah, I still look the same. I still have the same job and the wife and children and, and, and that. But something new has happened. That word is working in your heart and is producing faith and and you are realizing, how could I have ever been away from this? How could I have ever stopped loving the Lord? How could I have gotten so caught up in the times, in the world? But that happens all the time. Jesus is not to blame for anyone's eternal damnation. From the text you see over and over again, he has given ample opportunity. He longs for the individual to come to him, to receive from him the blessings of salvation. Being lost is because you're not willing. And that's a sad, sad thing. For an individual, yes, if I'd have gone to the doctor earlier, yes, I could have caught it earlier, I would have spared myself perhaps a lot of this stuff. I should have gone, I know now. you know now. Perhaps there have been some years that have been lost, but you know now. You know now. I need to be under the Lord's protecting wing. I need to be in his protecting care. I need to be in his loving care because that's where it's safe. And that's where I'm safe. And that's where I have no more fears about things that so easily cause me to be afraid there's where the Lord wants. And you can hear his plea to us this morning. Come. Come to me. Come to me. Come and receive from me. And by God's grace and by the Holy Spirit's prompting, we can say, Lord, I come. I come. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the true faith of Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.